view from each page, or if we don't need to do any from certain pages, we'll move on. Yes. I just want to know how to like do the division ones for this one. So number seven. Any others on the first page? Okay, we'll do those two. For number five, you would do this like a normal equation, cross multiply. Whether you put 2m on the left or the right, doesn't matter. And left. You also could have, because it's multiple choice, tried to put these numbers in for m to see which one made it true, and only 9 would have made that true. Um, it doesn't say this, but I'm going to put this in interval notation. It doesn't have a number line, so you kind of have to imagine this. If this is everything greater than or equal to 9, it's going to start at 9, and it's closed. It would be closed, so it would be bracket, and it's going to keep going to the right, so that would go to 9. Right, number seven, we have to get R by itself. So we got to get rid of nine, multiply that on both sides. And then solve that like normal, get rid of four by adding. Oh, well, that was easy. And then you can take this whole thing and flip it. Make sure the sign is facing the same way it was or was not facing before um, to the R. It was facing away from the R, so face it away from the R. And then if we were to do that in interval notation, everything less than 13 would be going to the left. So that would start at negative infinity and end at 13. You don't have to, but to help you kind of this part. Other questions on the first page? If the sign was facing the other way, would it be a positive infinity? Um, so like if it was this? Yeah. It would start at 13 and go to positive infinity, yes. So it would be 13 then? Yeah. Page two. Questions on that page? So we have an or inequality. Solve them separately. So on the left, we can subtract three. On the right, subtract 8, and then divide both sides by 7. Make sure your final answer has a OR in between it. And your OR inequalities need to graph apart from each other. So x is less than negative 2 would be open to the left. X, I'm oh, sorry. Um, Then your interval notation, you're doing the whole thing, so from start to finish, starts at negative infinity, ends at negative 2, it's open, or starts at 4, bracket, ends at infinity. Questions on that one? Yes. So you have to put like, the line, the other one, 
think there's a lot. This one? Like, you have to create another one from like negative two to four. So you should have two lines, this one and this one, for both of these. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, other questions on this page? Going on to page three. Questions on that page? Okay. So for 25, we can distribute the negative. Combine your like terms and then, sorry, get rid of six and divide both sides by negative two. Your sign would change directions. So this is going to be everything less than five, so it's going to be shaded to the left, and that would be A. If we were doing the interval notation, that would start at negative infinity, end at 5. Other questions on the paper? 26. So distribute the 7. Combine like terms on the same side. Then you can pick and choose what you want to move. What do we want to move? Add the five to it. Okay. And I'll add 21 at the same time. So that we have 30x is less than or equal to 30. Divide both sides by 30. So then if we're matching the interval notation, x is less than or equal to 1, it's going to go to the left, so it's going to start at negative infinity, so it can't be b or d, and it's going to end at positive 1. Other questions on this page? Go on to 4. On this page, we do the word on the same side. All right, so for 35, Victoria is going, going bowling. The cost per game is $3.50. Victoria will need to rent a pair of bowling shoes for $2.50. She can spend up to $22 to bowl and rent a pair of shoes. What is the maximum number of games that Victoria can bowl? So we need a variable, what do we want to call it? G for game, like cost per game. Mm -hmm. Not cost per game, we know that. Oh, no. number of games played. No. Number of games. This doesn't use one of our inequality words, but if she can spend up to $22, she can spend no more than $22, or she can't so spend less than $22. She can't spend more than she wants. Then how would we set up the rest of this inequality? Or is it the G? Plus 2.5. Plus 2.5. If you switch these 2.5 plus 3.5 G, that's also fine. And then let's solve that. Subtract 2.5.
whatever the rest is. We can't have 0. 0.6 of a gain. So can we, are we going to round up or down? So if I round it up, would she still well, have she rounded it up? It's, it's not no, short not five cents one. one. Oh, okay. So five cents, regardless, we can't have that of a gain. It's recommended to round down because then she'll, she won't surpass her limit. Right. So if we round it up, this would go to six, but then she'd go over her amount. So we got to round down to just five. Play no more than five games if she wants to not go over her limit. Other questions on this page? On to page five. Gardening. Every sunflower plant she waters requires 0.7 liters of water, and every lily plant she waters requires 0.5 liters of water. She has a total of 11 liters of water. And the first part is asking to write an inequality using S to represent the number of sunflower plants, and L to represent the number of lily plants. Because we have two different um, variables. It's going to be set up like your systems where you have two different variables. But then to look at our symbol, that'll be answered in this one. So we'll start to set it up. We know the number of sunflower plants, sorry, the uh, liters of water is going to go with the number of sunflower plants. So those will go together, 0.7 S. We have a total, so that's going to be adding 0.5 L. And we know she has a total of 11. Then to figure out our symbol, we know she waters 10 lily plants, so we're going to put 10 in for L. How many sunflower plants can she water at most with the remaining amount? So at most is which symbol? Less than, less than or equal to. So we're going to put 10 in for L, and then we'll solve that. Eleven liters of water. She can't uh, water more than eight sunflowers today until she gets more water. I guess. Other questions on this page? draw both parts and show where they overlap, but you really just need this part from 0 to 3 with a line in between. And if we were to do that interval notation, these would both be parentheses from 0 to 3. 
other questions on this page? Another and, so we can get rid of three by subtracting. We have negative six is less than or equal to negative six b, which is less than 36. Divide everything by negative six. Do the signs change? We subtract it. Yes, um, all the signs are going to change. But when we have and, it always has to be less than or less than or equal to, so take the whole thing and put it. So negative 6 is less than b, which is less than or equal to 1. So that would be open at negative 6, closed at 1, with a line in between it. And that would look like parenthesis, negative 6, 1, square bracket. So they always have to face to the left. Other questions on this page? Maybe 46. 46. Which value of x is not in the solution to the compound inequality below? So you can do one of two things. Put these numbers in and see do they work or not, or solve it and then see which one it is. So I'll show you that one first. Um, I'll solve it first. So if we add it to, to all sides, we have negative 6 is less than or equal to 6x, which is less than or equal to 6. Divide everything by 6. So if we're looking at which of these values would not fall between this, so if this starts at negative 1 and ends at 1, this is in there, this is in there, this is in there, 2 is not. But if I had just put Two, let's say I went down the list and I put two in there. Negative eight is less than or equal to minus two. This is not I added, not subtracted. Anyway, this is not a true statement. Ten is not um, while it is greater than eight, it's not less than four. So it works for one side but not the other. Questions on that? On to. So, your question says that they have to show the work or you can just show the limit. So, you have to show one of these types of work. 48. I should wait. Uh, five. Five. Or er, 51. 48 and 51. Just 51. Just 51. Okay, so this is your absolute value of inequality. We have to isolate first, get rid of 7. We have 2 times the absolute value of x minus 4 is less than or equal to 8. Divide everything by 2. And now that it's isolated, the sign did not change, so it's still less than or equal to, which is going to be and. You can either Create your two cases or make it a condensed case. The condensed case would be negative 4 is less than or equal to x minus 4, which is less than or equal to 4. Or the two separate cases would be x minus 4 is less than or equal to 4, and then x minus 4 is greater than or equal to negative 4. So either or. And add 4. That would start at zero, close, end at eight, also close, line between them. They would both be brackets. Other questions on this page? Where did the x go for it again? So they see negative two or is less than or equal to x minus four. Sorry, which x are you talking about? Oh, wait, it's in the x minus four. But where did negative four go? This one, so you have to create two cases, regardless. You could have did this. But because 
because it's an and, you can also write it as if and as. You have to create the second case. So you make that up. Oh, by creating and then you switch the signs backwards. Basically, this is reading the same way as this. You're just reading it backwards. So if we do that, we'll go back to right. Yes, your answer has to be condensed, though. Okay. Or, or it does not have to be condensed. Correct. You should have two separate things. Any other questions on this page? Um, when we get back, I'll ask really quickly if we have any graphing or systems of graphing questions, and then you guys can find 61. I don't remember what page was on. You would need to solve this, subtract 2x. So we have negative y is less than or equal to negative 2x minus 2. Divide everything by negative 1. <laughs> so that the sign changes and everything is now positive. And then go ahead and graph that. Start at 2. Our slope is positive 2. No, don't. This would be a solid line because of the equal to shaded above. And that would be really to the left. Questions on that? Okay. Find a system. Um, really, because this would be above would be here, which is everything here. Find a systems question. Shade in the uh, the solution area. That's fine. Just make sure it's the right area. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you choose uh, dotted and transverse So this one would be your dashed point. I should probably get that because it's going to add up. Because this one doesn't have an equal to, but this one has an equal to. So because that has an equal to, it would be solid. Other last minute questions? You have to grab them in different colors. You don't have to do them in different colors, but I need to be able to see the overlapping. So if I can't see that, or if it's hard to see, you may want to use either two different colors, highlight it, do lines like I just did, something where I can see the overlap there. So you can just like shade it in different directions? You could do that. But be careful because pencil sometimes is hard to see unless so you're doing it two different yeah all right clear off your desk and put your calculators up